We have some big news. The Penguins trade away Derek Broussard, Riley Shan, a second round pick, a fourth round pick, and another fourth round pick, all in this year's draft to the Panthers in exchange for Nick Bukestad and Jared McCann. Now, this is by far the Penguins' biggest trade since they originally got Broussard last year, and I have a lot to talk about. Sorry, this is a day late, right? Life gets in the way of things. Uh, this happened at the worst time possible. I had work yesterday, so I'm currently recording this Friday night. Gonna, You guys are going to see it Saturday. Uh, but I have a bunch I want to talk about, so let's stop wasting time. For the first time ever, I have a bunch of like points that I want to get to so I don't forget anything on my phone. Usually, I just go into it without anything, but I literally wrote things down because I have a lot to say about this trade. So it's both teams swapping their bottom six centers. And let me give you my honest, honest opinion here. I'm going to say Brassard is the better player than uh, Bukestad right now. And that's just because of his age, his experience. But the one thing that I've realized is that the Penguins aren't looking for a better player than Brassard. They're looking for a better fit. Because when you look at it on paper, Brassard is better than Bonino, is better than Sutter. But both of those guys played better than Brassard. It's all about how they fit. I don't want a guy to be better than... Well, I do want a guy better than Brassard. But you know what I mean. I want a guy who's going to fit better than Brassard. Then we have McCann and Shan. And I would say Shan is just a little bit better, just like Brassard, because of the age and experience. But it's not by much. And uh, McCann is way, way younger. You got to love how Jim Rutherford traded Brassard and Shan, who have one year left, both UFAs, older players, and get back... Bukestad and McCann who Bukestad is 26 he has three years left at 4.1 million and McCann is two has two years left at 22 years old and he's going to be an RFA when his deal is over so the Penguins will probably re-sign him so, so pretty much what they did here is Broussard and Chan in the summertime are gone so they're going to leave with absolutely nothing instead for the next two to three years they have McCann for the two years and Bukestad for three years and then like I said McCann is an RFA so he will most likely re-sign in two years when his contract is up. The way I look at this, it's a high reward, low risk type of situation. Nick Bukes that if he works out, which I think he will, it's you're getting three years of a solid third line center who makes 4.1, a pretty reasonable price if he works out. And he's 26. So every year of that contract, you're getting a good Nick Bukes that he's not going to be slowing down. And if it doesn't work out, you're just back at square one with Bukestad and you have three years to make this work which I think it will work I think he'll buy into the system beautifully and then if it does let's say it doesn't work I do think Jared McCann is a really underrated part of this trade which I will get to in just two seconds here so this is a guy who's almost put up 20 goals I think if he finds his game he could be a consistent 45 point guy 20 goal scorer as the Penguins third line center pretty much being what Broussard should have been. The way this reminds me, he's a bigger version of Nick Bonino. And if he could be anything close to how Nick Bonino worked with the Penguins, this is a steal of a trade. If he can be even anything close to what Nick Bonino was as a Penguin, which I think he can be because he's an all-around player. He kills penalties. He put you, you can put him on the second power play. He's got a good shot. He's big, hard to knock off the, off the puck. It's an advantage. When you're a center and you're that big, it's a really, really big advantage. A potential line I'd like to try with Bukestad would be maybe a Brian Rust, Bukestad, and a Phil Kessel. That would be really good and almost reminds me of the HBK line. Bukestad being a bigger version of Bonino, Rust being a right-handed version of Haglin and just not as fast, but still very fast. And then Phil Kessel being Phil Kessel. I'm really excited to see what Bukestad does in the playoffs because he's only been to the playoffs one time. And in that one time, it was in the first round and he lost in five games when he was with the Panthers a couple years ago. But what I liked about that is if you look at his numbers in that short, short playoff run, he had four points, two goals in five games. So in that one playoff run he had, well, playoff run, that one just round that he had, he did really good on the Florida Panthers. So I I'm really excited to see what he does on a team like the Penguins, who are most probably going to make the playoffs and hopefully go on a run, you know, win a round or two or three or four. That would be really nice. But I'd like to see what he does as a Penguin in the playoffs. So now let's move on to Jared McCann, who I think is underrated in this trade, and I'll tell you why. Jared McCann, who's 22 years old, in my opinion, has all the potential in the world here. And if the Penguins do this right, which they've done it before with these young type of players, I think he could be not a superstar, but he can fit really well with one of our top six centers. Kind of like he reminds me of a, a Jake Gensel. And I think he could be not as good, but he can, be, he can go on that path of, as a Jake Gensel. Obviously, I think we should start McCann as the fourth line center, play him in his right position to get him comfortable with the team, get used to the team. But as soon as you know he starts picking it up, move him to the wing, maybe try him out with Bukestad on that third line, and then move him up 
Ultimately, I'd love him to play with Malkin. I think he'd be the perfect winger for Malkin. And if, like I said, if the Penguins do this right, he could be a 20-25 goal scorer playing with Evgeny Malkin. That's why if Bukestad doesn't even work out as the third line center, Jared McCann might make up for the trade if he doesn't work out. Now, if, if they both work out, this is a great trade, but that's a big if, which I think could happen. Look, Jim Rutherford has questionable moves. You know, the Ryan Reeves trade, not a fan of it. Jack Johnson and Matt Hunwick signing, bad, very bad. This Brassard trade to get Brassard last year was not a bad trade. I understand why they did it, and I'm not mad at it, because at the time, you gave up all that for two years of an elite center core. On paper, the best center core we've had ever, Back going back to the Jordan Stahl days, which was a long time ago, and it just didn't work out. And it wasn't Jim Rutherford's fault that Brassard didn't work out. I am, I'm to this day shocked that Brassard didn't work out. There had to be something for that happening. I don't know why Broussard didn't work out. I know this is a long video. I have a lot to say, but don't worry. We only have like three more things I need to get to here. And that is the next thing is the draft picks that we lost. But the way I look at this is Jared McCann, in my opinion, replaces the second round pick that we lost. Cause look, you have the second round pick, right? In the 2019 draft, you draft a really good player. Let's say a forward, you draft a really good scoring forward, right? But he's 18. He can't play in the NHL right away. He's going to go into his junior league or whatever, probably the OHL or whatever. Play two years of the OHL, come at 20 years old. Finally, he's eligible to play in the AHL. So he's going to go play a rookie, his rookie season in the AHL until he's, we'll say, 21. He'll finally make an impact in the NHL. But hey, let me tell you guys something. What is that? In like three, four years, the Penguins won't be winning cups, unfortunately. The time is now. So it's like they put the second round pick that they just traded, put it in a time capsule or whatever, flash forward three years and get Jared McCann, who I don't know if you guys makes, if that makes sense, because I am kind of confusing it. What I'm trying to say is the second round pick is like a fast forward version of what Jared McCann, Jared McCann is only 22 and he can make up for that second round pick is what I'm trying to say. And he makes the impact right now. You know who he kind of reminds me of? And I guess you can call me crazy or not reminds me of, but he replaces Daniel Sprong in the organization as a, you know, a, a winger who has a good shot, speed, just a bit better defensively. And I think McCann is going to be what we all wanted Sprong to be, but Sprong just never worked out. And hey, look, we get Pedersen in that deal and we get kind of like a Sprong 2.0. I don't want to label McCann as that, but you know what I mean? Kind of like replacing what Sprong should have been. And we even got Bukestad, who's a former first round pick from way back 2010, but he's a former first round pick just like McCann. So we're getting potential here. Yes, we're giving up picks. It sucks. But these picks are going to be ready in three to four years. We're getting guys who are going to be good right now and in three, four years are going to still be good. And one more thing about the draft picks. I'm totally fine. I'm okay if the Penguins trade their first round pick for this year. And I'm the type of guy who loves the draft. I want us to keep all the draft picks. But look, guys, you can't have every... What's the saying? You can't have your cake and eat it too, which doesn't really make sense, but that's for another time. Uh, whatever that saying is, you can't have your cake and eat it too, which means you can't be winning cups and have your first and second and third round picks. I'm totally fine with trading these first round picks. Obviously, I'd like to keep it, but if there's an opportunity to get a good player who will help us for now and the future, do it because this window is closing, guys. One more final thing before I wrap this video up is you got to give credit to Jim Rutherford because he's done something that he's never done before in his time as a Penguins GM. Jim Rutherford traded guys with one year left on his on their deals and got back players that have multiple years left and are younger. And that's something that he hasn't done before. And let's go back to 2017. Nick Bonino, Trevor Daly, Chris Kunitz. All those guys had one year, and there's more that I'm probably missing. All those guys had one year left on their deals and he could have easily traded Trevor Daly and gotten something back, whatever, Nick Bonino. But at that time, he wanted to keep them going to the playoffs and he knew he was going to lose them for nothing, but he wanted to try and win with them and he did and it worked out and then he lost them for nothing and that hurt the team a lot. And what he did here instead, he knows that this team isn't what they were two, three years ago. He needs to trade these guys because if you lose them for nothing, the window gets this much smaller. I just love what Jim Rutherford did here. Like I said, he opened up the window. And like I said, if the Penguins lose this year and they don't win the cup, they're no longer going to be screwed because that's what they were going to be if they kept all these guys and went into the playoffs with Shan and Hagelin and Brossard. They would have come July 1st and not been able to resign them. And the only time that's okay is if they win the cup. And that's putting a lot of pressure on them. So all these guys are going to get chemistry with each other. Bukestad is going to get chemistry with the team more than he is right now to next year. Same with all these guys he just traded for. And the same even in two years, they're going to get even more chemistry. And as long as Crosby and Malkin, you know, they're the ones who are steering the ship right now. As long as they're doing their thing, which they are, these guys are getting chemistry. They're going to get better. I see the team having, like I said, the window being open for this year and then two other years. 
compared to what it would have been just this year and then they're screwed next year and then the window's probably closed shut and finally i'm gonna wrap up this video thank you guys so much for watching let me know what you think of the video and as always i will see you next time thank you for watching